You know how I said one thing leads to another? Well, here you go. Uh, I actually did take that off. That's the main screw um, gear set, I guess. Uh, and I've actually, this was actually pretty good. It was just flat and the screws had marked where they go. So all I did is I just did a little dip in there for them. Um, but the, the screws and everything are good on this. So yeah, I took that piece off as well and it just keeps getting worse. I hope I'm going to be able to put all this back together. So I'm going to give this a clean and then put um, put this back on first onto the main screw and then the rest. So one of the issues that I found, um, and this is the gib for the main screw for the threading, is you can see there's um, threads in, well, you can see there's actually threads in the bottom hole, but in the top hole, there's actually no threads. It's flat. It's got some semblance of a thread towards the bottom of it. So that's one thing that's happened, um, which means I don't know that it makes a huge bunch of difference because um, let me just show you. Well, these go here, but hold on a second. Right. So that's where the little gib thing goes, which in theory is held down in there by these two bolts but that one is nothing that one does work um, but then you've got these three screws pushing it right up against here so I don't know that you really need that but obviously it should be there um, so at some point I'm gonna have to find out how to actually put a thread in there I'm gonna need some threading tool and then I don't know that it'll work because the the bolts that go in there now um, are catching nothing so I might have to change the bolt or something I don't know that's for uh, another day so as a general rule you will need to deburr and clean up most pieces this is the main uh, <coughs> attachment point on the other end of where the main uh, screw goes so this goes in there to hold that screw up and it had quite a big dent in it so um, with use of a metal file I just smooth that out and uh, I might as well do the rest of the edges to give it that little bit of chamfering I know this is exactly what Blondie Hacks means when she says that chamfering is what separates us from the animals although she may change that little sentence once she sees me doing it um, and I'm going to do it on the other side too because why not? I'm a neat kind of guy. That's right. You can tell I use precision tooling at every opportunity. Um, I'm really hoping to make some very, very precise parts with this machine. And you, you can tell that I, uh, I have that hope from the way that I work, can't you? Yes, yes, indeed. Anyway, so that's, you know, giving it a bit of a a smoother edge than it had and the reason I'm doing that on this one in particular is because that dent there was actually um, it had produced a little spur inside the um, the part here which meant that the Chinese ball bearings composed of these three parts uh, you can see there's like that little tin that's been Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, don't worry, I will give this a clean later. But you see how this is built? It's, um, I don't know, I just don't think that's how it's supposed to be. So I've ordered um, another three of these. Because you're going to need two here for the main screw. And then the one I showed you last time. And I'm going to replace those with the new ones. Which um, I'm going to be hopeful and say that they don't look like teen squished around little metal spheres the way these ones do um, I did check the size and I ordered ones that are the right size they look real nice in the photograph on Amazon so I'll let you know when they arrive if they're the same thing or not uh, but I needed to do this because on this particular hole it also had an extra washer 
to space it out so this poked out a bit because otherwise the ball bearings caught on there so um, that's not good and that's why I'm doing this um, so that you know th these are they're gonna be unique to your machine whatever you do but you're gonna come across stuff like this so that's why you need to take it all apart and start from scratch which you know once I've done with this carriage that's pretty much it I'm gonna be left with the chuck which is gonna be a real pain to take out uh, but I will and, uh, and then checking the gearbox and the electrical bits which uh, I'm kind of scared of doing right now so <laughs> we'll leave that for a bit later but I'll uh, I'll get back to you once I've put the main screw things back on so one uh, another point I just learned the main carriage of the ways uh, you know it's held on by three screws there three screws there but if you tighten them too much you won't be able to move this at all now I think this has to be pretty tight but uh, not so tight you can't move it because obviously that's going to be the wheel that engages the, the gear here um, so it's got to be sort of finger tight and I suppose you have to check it every now and then for vibration so that's something I learned I think I learned and we have the first part of the carriage on there and working so uh, yeah, it's, it is a bit tight, but I've made it that way on purpose, and I've got whey oil on the way, so I'm going to be putting some whey oil on there. It is running pretty smooth. This handle is very disturbing, though. Um, irritating, to put it that way. It needs, uh, it needs changing and improving, but, uh, yeah. When, when this gets a bit loose, it's much better. And, you know, to be fair, uh, there's a bit of play here, which is, again, not great. But I think this is another one of those, um, got to change the ball bearings in there. Anyway, that's part one. I'm going to carry on with part two. Um, since it's not much fun seeing somebody put things back on, I'll just show you the end product.